FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. I've enjoyed watching uh, Chuck Perguson's uh, political career going out for uh, the big federal seat here. Now everyone knows Senator Perguson represents the 33rd District here in the Missouri Senate. And he's now uh, the challenger in the primary to uh, Representative Roy Blunt for the GOP nomination. And everyone knows Senator Perguson, he's he's had longer hair. And he's, rec- I mean, he's. I, I, I love that he's a limited government, a very grassroots guy. And that really hasn't gotten him a lot of attention, sadly. But this move actually may uh, help bolster his platform. He's um, well. He's he's he got a, a look update. Senator Perguson, good afternoon to you. Thanks so much for joining me. Good afternoon. Thanks for having me. So I saw the press release that was sent out by your folks, and uh, you essentially you had a you wore a toupee for a number of years. And you basically just you you turn you went into your fifties. You turned fifty, is that correct? Yes, ma'am. You turned yep. fifty, and you just went. You updated your look. I think it was part of leaving the rocking forties and beginning yeah. the mature fifties. So, uh, but it was a t- decision I made, and you know we're we're having a lot of fun with it. You know we're uh, I believe in transparency in government, and and uh, I think that uh, it's a sad fact. Eleven months out of the year, I was talking about boring things like the deficit and the growing debt that we're having <laughs> with, with our children and grandchildren. But uh, I get a lot of press off this. Yeah, it, well, isn't that interesting how society works? So well, I love it that you're actually able to use this to translate into greater attention for the issues that really need it. You said that uh, in a statement, you said, quote, I removed my hair to assure voters that nothing will be swept under the rug on my watch. And you've ran a pretty strong campaign on on grassroots platform, on on, on really on Tea Party principles, very limited government, uh, low spending, uh, good foreign policy, all of that. And uh, it's I'm glad that something like this has been able to be used to bolster your stance on that in the media. Now, you've you've gotten national attention for this, too, yes? Oh, yeah, I absolutely have gotten some national attention. But, you know, again, uh, I remember when I got elected into office the first time in 1996 in the Missouri House, uh, a news reporter said at that, just a few weeks ago, he said that you were Tea Party when Tea Party wasn't cool. So, uh, you know, I've been a frustrated person for a long time because I got involved in top politics because I was frustrated, and and, it, and it's great to see people starting to wake up. And I believe that silent majority of people across the country now, right now, are becoming excited, uh, and they want to have an opportunity to uh, get get in and and do some things to try to get their country back. Because I, I think that uh, they're seeing that we can't continue to try to borrow our way to prosperity. Uh, and all across the country, especially in our campaign, they're getting energized, and and um, hopefully we can get everyone involved, and we can begin changing this country around. Yeah, one of the things that I I, I like about uh, the issues that you represent is there, you see things very black and white, and I I know that there's you know there's some other legislators in different states, and we've talked about them here on this show, where uh, that well like in Kentucky, Rand Paul's challenger said, oh you can't, I mean I understand that the deficit's uh, increasing, it's tripled, and uh, but you can't take away all earmark spending and all entitlement spending, you have to have a little bit, but y- you I mean you really understand that you give Congress an inch and they'll take a mile. You really understand that if you're going to be true to the roots and true to principle. You need to have limited government. Period. Yes. Well, what part of what part of broke do we not understand? Uh, you know, the, the the problems are is when I first started this race a year ago, uh, my brochure put the national debt and how much was owed by each person. And each time I've reprinted my brochure, I had to add to those numbers. Now I think that's sad that that we're we're growing at a rate. Uh, that when you print a brochure, it's out of date in a few few months. So, mm-hmm. uh, I think that's scary, and you know, I uh, I just un- I don't think people understand the depth of the debt of this country, and that that we have got to dig dig our way out of this, or we're going to get past the point of no return. And, and you know, nothing uh, America cannot be strong if we're not strong financially. Yeah, uh, absolutely. So, 
Uh, a little bit of poison can kill you just as fast as a whole lot of poison. And, and right now, a little bit of spending, a, a little here, a little there, adds up to real dollars after a while. Oh, yes. And you served uh, as chairman of the Committee on Appropriations for Health and Mental Health and Social Services. And obviously, health care is something that uh, you've spoken a lot about. One of the things that I have seen from a lot of people running for office this year is right when the health care law, right when that was being passed, right at the very climax of all of the protesting and the the pressure on Congress to do the right thing. There were a lot of Republican candidates who, you know, beat their fist on the pulpits and on the lecterns and everything else and said, we're going to make sure we repeal this. And then a month or two later, I stopped hearing anything about it. And you still, uh, from what I've seen, you're still including that stuff. I mean, you still talk about it. What's your view on that? I mean, do you really, do you feel it should be repealed and, and just ripped back? I think a lack of Republican leadership is what put us in that in the first place. You know, uh, you know the, the buzzwords for Republicans right now is Reed, Pelosi, and Obama. But, you know, if we'd have done our job from 2000, 2006 when we were in charge, uh, I believe those people would still be in a minority party. There was things that we could have done with health care back when we had the opportunity to and didn't. And I remember in 2005, uh, I sponsored legislation that was the biggest reduction in the history of the state of Missouri when it comes to the entitlements because at that time the state of Missouri was going broke. Mm. So, yeah. you know, we we stood firm on the issues. I sponsored the legislation. It was the toughest year of my life, but it was something that we had to do. And, Absolutely. And, you know, I, I'm, I'm the type that uh, I get into government, I'm going to do something. You know, I'm not going to go up there and, and do what I can to stay there. I think you go up there and fix the problems, and then you get yeah. to come back home one of these days. And, well, and uh, I think that uh, if we had done our job as Republicans and, and reformed the system when we had the opportunity to, we wouldn't be out fighting brush fires that uh, are threatening to burn our country down now that uh, the other side continues to fight. Yeah, absolutely. I want to ask you, too, really quick about the Health Care uh, Freedom Act that's going to be going on the, the ballot, a proposition going on the ballot coming up. Uh, what, what are your thoughts on that for uh, that act here in Missouri? Well, I was a co-sponsor of that, and I was proud to work on getting that on the ballot. But I think it's states across the country are re- reaffirming their Tenth Amendment rights. Uh, you know, we've got a federal government that deficit spends, that prints money, that uh, has no fiscal responsibility. And I think that's why you're seeing states in trouble now, is like the state of Missouri has a balanced budget. And we're in partnership with someone that deficit spends, that puts everything on a credit card, and, and that's why you're seeing the strain in states' budgets all across the country right now. So it's a partnership that cannot continue the direction we are now with irresponsible spending in Washington. And I think it is uh, the states beginning the process of fighting back because we can't afford it anymore. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you're enjoying a lot of grassroots support, and you, uh, you're you a true grassroots candidate. And uh, I like the, the things on which you're campaigning. One last-